Well, I'd wanted to tell the story for, 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 um, for a number of years. I think I first thought about um, depicting this experience of a relationship I had in the early 80s. The story, without giving too much away, is about a young woman who gets involved with a, with a relationship with a man. Um, and it's quite a complicated, uh, quite distressing relationship at times. And I always felt that I needed to tell the story from both perspectives, from the female perspective and from the male perspective. And I think that's what always tripped me up. I thought that I've got to, got to see his point of view and got to understand his point of view. And, and the problem I always found myself faced with was not knowing who this person was, that they were still a mystery to me, even having gone through this, this relationship, which lasted a number of years. Um, so it was only when I realized I could tell the story without understanding him, but having an understanding of her, who was myself, um, in some shape and or form, um, that, that, yeah, that, that, that freed me up, that, that, that idea that I could just see it from her perspective in a way. I mean, I don't know if there's a way of protecting yourself from that. I mean, it's a solitary business in a way, certainly when I start writing on my own and, and, and start sort of del delving into this territory, it's, um, it's very, um, yeah, it's a very emotionally charged. I would say the most painful part of the process for me is, is um, going through old photographs, letters, diaries, and, and in a way bringing this, this early, this young 20-something young woman to life again. When you ask me that, I think about creativity, and I think what was what was interesting and quite uh, exciting, in a way, was was uh, thinking and remembering projects that I wanted to make in in my early twenties that I, that I that I that I maybe wrote or, or thought about but didn't realise, and that was very exciting to to have a chance to make that work again. So I was able to look at those ideas and read those ideas. Sometimes I would snigger a bit or, or be a little bit embarrassed uh, to myself about, about some of the, the things that I wrote down, but mostly it was very well intentioned and quite exciting. I mean, I was, very, I was a very inspired young woman. I, I tend to think other people think that I'm investigating class when actually I'm not that interested in it. And, and, in, and, in, and in this film, uh, well, actually in the last film, Exhibition, I really thought, OK, I'm making a film now. No one's going to talk about class because I'm talking about two artists. Artists are in a class of their own, in a sense. You know, we're not going to have these, you know, phrases banded about, about privilege and middle class. Um, and then, of course, it all, <laughs> it all, come, it all um, comes up again. And then with this one, well, in a way, I'm, 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 I'm heading into the eye of the storm, in a sense, because I'm dealing with a young woman who's uh, asking these questions herself. I'd um, been you know, developing a, a friendship with him since he saw Archipelago um, a number of years ago, and he, he uh, became interested in my work. And then when I made exhibition, I asked him to uh, look at a, a, a cut of the film um, before we lock the, the picture, and he anyway he became involved creatively in in the process of, of um, exhibition as I as I was completing it, and so when I started thinking about the souvenir as a story that I wanted to make, it um, it just seemed obvious, or it seemed a really nice thing to invite Martin to executive produce the film. You know, for a number of reasons, it's a film about cinema. Um, uh, it's, it, um, it has the, 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 the ghosts of Paul and Pressburger over it, um, and I just thought he would yeah, re respond to the story. So I always wanted to make uh, the souvenir in two parts. It, it actually, going back to my uh, initial ideas in 1988, in my notebook um, at that time I wrote about a story of a relationship um, that would form one part of, uh, of, of two films, and that the second film would be some kind of reaction to it, uh, resp artistic response to it. 
And uh, I, I'm not going to say too more about my description of the second part, but actually when I, I looked again the other day at this, this dual description, and, and it's very accurate to what I've set out to do um, with, with both parts. The casting process has been quite similar for all, all my films in a way where I've cast actors and, and non-actors. And I intended, or I, I thought it would be right to cast uh, Julie as, as a non-actor. I was interested to find someone who, who really was um, a young woman who wanted to be a filmmaker or wanted to be an artist. I would meet actresses and would find that they I didn't have a sense that they could be behind the camera. They were very much, their energy was in front of the camera. And I actually wanted to find someone who wasn't, wouldn't be very comfortable in front of a camera, which seems like a, a, a sort of contradictory thing to do. But I wanted that sense of a, of a real artist or a real artist developing in front of our eyes. Um, I didn't quite get that sense until I saw Honor. And she had not only a feeling of, of, of believably being a young artist with ideas, but also because of her upbringing, um, she is not from, didn't feel from that Instagram generation um, of, of the sort of selfie. It felt like she was somebody who had that quality that I recognized in my, uh, of myself at, at that time. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 when, I'm, when I'm making the film, I'm not thinking about the audience that much. But that doesn't mean I don't care. It's almost that I care so much about the audience, I don't want to think about what an audience, how an audience might respond. So I see the audience as, a, as yes, as having more intelligence than that. So I tend not to, not to talk down to an audience. And I always feel that if I can dig deep enough in, 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 into the, the truth of the experience that that, that will there, therefore chime with people. I think if you're honest enough with depicting something and you're prepared to go very deep, it's sort of almost like archaeological work, very, very deep into a kind of very painful place, then that get, is going to somehow hit other people's sensibilities too. I mean, the, the, it would be twofold in a way. I would say just keep firm with your ideas, have the ideas, have the confidence to realize them and follow them through. I think I had so many ideas, I had so, so many projects that I wanted to make, but very few actually got made. It might be too early to say because I'm still in the middle of the work because we only finished shooting part two a couple of weeks ago and I haven't started editing yet. So I think when, when I've completed both parts, because I do see them as one object, then, then I might be able to answer that.